Well, happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. Tex, behave yourself. <laughs> We're on live TV now. He's just chilling. He is just chilling. He is just chilling. As you can see, Courtney has the day off today. We're so excited to have you with us, Lauren Thank Kelly. Thank you so much. I mean, I feel like we're just keeping the weekend going, you know? <gasps> I mean, in case you missed it, Mardi Gras, when did you go down to Galveston on Friday? I went down Friday morning because we were live from the float barn that held all the parade floats for Houston Life. We did a segment from there, and that was amazing to see in what was kind of like an airplane hangar. It was all the floats that were going to be in the parade. And the floats are stored there year-round? Yes. They live there all the time? They live there all the time. They can make adjustments to them there. They put the lights up. They kind of touch up the paint, and the themes are worked on each year. But we got down there Friday, and then we did the San Luis Salute and the Champagne pre-party for Tillman Fertitta. Tillman knows how to throw a great party. He really I, does. That was off the chain. I have never seen or been a part of anything like that. And you took your boyfriend Gabriel, yeah? I did. They gave me a plus one. And so we went. It, the best way to describe the San Luis Salute, which the Chainsmokers performed, and in years past, he's had Usher and he's had Jason Derulo. The pre-party started here on Tillman's yacht, which we had to... Um, Take our shoes off. Oh, to get of in. course. The, like the lovely, like the nice carpet. Oh, there's Frank, Frank Billingsley. Frank Billingsley was there with me, and he uh, kind of gave me a tour because I feel like he gets invited to these things a little bit more frequently than uh, I do. Oh, and Frank knows the ins and outs of Galveston. He and his husband Kevin have a house down there, and they hang out all the time. I think he should be the mayor of Galveston. I couldn't agree more. He knows everybody there. And so after the yacht, we all shuttled over to the Galveston Convention Center. And the best way to describe the San Luis Salute was basically a wedding with 2,000 guests without wow. the wedding. So it was just the reception. And uh, the seating chart alone would give me anxiety to try to put something like that together. But it was absolutely fabulous. And I just, all the pictures I know we put on the Houston Life Facebook and we did a Facebook Live. So. You have to go back and see them. Yeah, go amazing. check it out. Even yeah. there, there was so much going on. If you guys have never been down to Galveston for Mardi Gras, I highly recommend it. Book a hotel room, go down, spend the night, because mm -hmm. uh, you definitely don't want to be driving anywhere. Just get no. down on the island, stay down there. And there were so many great uh, things to do. It's, it really is like a family event, right? We think of Mardi Gras and we think of New Orleans, right? right. And we forget that we have our version, which is family friendly and so much fun. I was still sort of like piecing the, the night together the next morning because <laughs> we... Why, Derek? I don't know. There was just a lot going on. My little brain was just so filled with things. But we, our crew at Channel 2, they got down there bright and early. They had done so many visits ahead of time. There's just a little bit of our setup. but I just, I'd never seen anything like that. Yeah, they set up a control room out there under that little tent. Uh, Christine and I were at the By desk. By the and... way, look at these two hosts of the parade. Are they not the most stunning people you've oh, ever seen? Oh, I don't know what you're talking you about. You both had the sparkles. I mean, you just lit up the stage. Thank you, Sephora. <laughs> Speaking of makeup, look at Frank's makeup. Look how great that Amazing. is. Amazing. Now, he had a professional do that, right? He didn't do it himself? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Frank showed me his face paint work before, and it's it's pretty pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty stellar. No, I think that looks looks great. Yeah, and he you did. You two were great. having so much fun. You were passing out our Channel Two beads. Yeah, and they were such a popular item. I just loved handing them out. And that Rockets hat right there, Tillman had brought you uh, one the day before to show off. That was kind of the memorabilia Rockets hat that has yeah. Houston Rockets Mardi Gras 2020 on the back of it. Such a cool addition that they passed out that night. Well, I think the hats are a really cool idea because this year, as you mentioned, it has Mardi Gras 2020 mm -hmm. on the back of it. But I guess they're going to do the caps every single year. Oh. So if you're in the crowd watching the parade, you can, you know, put your hands up and try to grab a hat because Absolutely. there are thousands of them. But I think they will be like a limited edition collector's item. For sure. Yeah, I didn't get to keep mine very long. My boyfriend Gabriel was like, oh, thanks for the party favor. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and you made a lot of friends handing out the beads. I did. And we have so many wonderful viewers that came up and were just so excited to be a part of the big day with us. It was really, really exciting. <laughs> so we were, we had one of these uh, jib cams, guys, where it's like a, um, how do I describe? Like the jib is like, a, it's a long arm, right? So it's okay. a camera 
on the end of a long arm. And we were, Christine and I were stationed right at the beginning of the parade. So mm -hmm. when the floats come around the corner, they are, you know, making their way right. down to the strand from seawall there. And we started getting hit with <gasps> beads. So the jib was covered <laughs> with beads. And, and in fact, I, like so, I see like the moving I, I, arm. I, I it would just have like oh beads all over. We had, I woke up the next coming. morning. I woke up, I had glitter on my face. Yes. Like, what happened last night? I remember how you got the glitter on your face. You do? Yeah. Tell Somebody me, because I don't. <laughs> So, there was a couple people who were just very excited to talk to you and they you you'd hug everybody and they would get very close and I just remember looking over and I was like I don't remember Derek having his face painted but is just that what happened too close and some people got their blue glitter from their <sighs> face paint yeah well, we did meet we did meet a lot of very nice yes, people yes. Um, at the parade and before the after party but I had been whacked in the head so what we realized <laughs> is Christine and I are at the desk right and we're talking about all the floats coming by and the marching bands and you know this marching band yeah. they have 70 people in them and then we while we're reading these lines we're still like waving at the floats and we found that when you wave at the float that makes it more likely that they're gonna throw oh the that's beads. The so I got clocked in the face <gasps> I was looking down like trying to get ready for this float that I was about to get on which by the way I loved the Landry's fire truck float but do you yeah. know how hard it is to get yourself and a cameraman on top of a moving fire how truck? did you do it were you just running along and then they hoisted uh, you I have actual springs in my feet so I took a little running jump and then just flew on top of it no no I was hoisted by the back. There was a small ladder, and I hope nobody was behind me watching because that was a hot mess. It reminds me yeah. of like maybe the scene in Titanic when Jack jumps off the lifeboat. Uh huh. Or maybe, no, it's Rose who jumps off the lifeboat, right? Where she's lowering down in the water and then she jumps up. Jumps. Was that you? Kind of like on the that. Floats? Well, yeah. nobody would have ever known. Yeah. Oh, it Straight happened. Straight on like camera. Thank you. So, in addition to the parade, right, the parade starts at Seawall and it goes down to the Strand and people are hanging out, having a good time. Right. Parties all over the place. But Tillman threw this huge after party with Lil John. Yes. And Lil John sounded familiar to me, um, but I wasn't, and, <laughs> until he played like the shots, 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 right. shots, shots. Then you I was like, oh, it. that's him. Derek, how do you not know who Lil John is? I don't know, but Brandon certainly did. Look at that. He's Everybody it. knew who Rock Lil John cap. was. You know what's really surprising about Lil John? I know he's on a couple of really popular songs, but he's also a DJ. So he spins and he mixes the album songs that you might not know he's in charge of. Oh. So okay. a lot of the really fun, danceable club bangers. If you will, are his. Club and he was kind of spinning and DJing from the stage, and he would kind of just do that. Yeah, yeah. What? You, Derek didn't even know that's Little John's thing. What was the sound you just made? Okay. Yeah. What? <laughs> that. Sorry, is that like sounds Cher. more like Cher. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do it again. How, how does he do it? He does. Okay. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then. What? You guys have to back me up on this. Hey, yeah, yeah. I believe you, and my, and the team clearly believes that you sound 100% like him. I don't know if I sound. I'm not gonna do it again. 100%. Yeah, yeah. That is for sure. Oh, Cher. Cher. I, I don't do impressions, okay? I don't even do Cher very well. That was a good Cher. Share little share John impression. <laughs> By the way, you can't see text. Just, just I know, turned. but he just he just yawned. He <laughs> turned his head and yawned. He really he was just trying to cover up you. his ears about your uh, your share impression. So I woke up with glitter on my face. Right. There was a boa, beads all over the room. Some of these people, when watching the parade, they end up with beads so big that it's like there's so many beads it's about to cover their face. And it's heavy. So it's I'm like, very people, heavy. at some point this is just not functional. Yeah. Maybe dangerous to have all of these beads. Yeah. Well, they say millions of beads were thrown, right? Oh, millions. I think it was upwards of three million beads. And there was five times the amount of people on Galveston Island than normal. Than weekend. the normal yes. crowd is. Wow. Crazy. My time. question is, who's in charge of picking up and cleaning up after that parade? Oh, I did. You did? Oh, I was there sweeping all night. Well, that's where the glitter came from. <laughs> there you go. That makes sense. We had a baby shower yesterday, and we had a lot of things going on. A lunch and a baby shower, so we woke up, glitter on my face, was very confused, <laughs> and uh, got back to Houston, did a, a baby shower for our friends Aaron and Alex, who are okay. expecting twins. Oh, wow. A Congratulations to them. Next month. And then, can you believe it is time for Rodeo? I know. The I Rodeo Uncorked Best Bites competition was last night. 
night. And this is also something, if you haven't checked it out, I think about 3,000 attendees go. Mm -hmm. They've got 450 different wines, 100 different restaurant vendors. So you essentially eat and drink your way through it. These are the judges' table. So I, I was one of the media judges. Okay. But you can see there at NRG Center, all these folks who are out, essentially, you buy a ticket, you come in, and you just sort of drink and eat your way through. That's my friend and Felice. You, you taste all the food <laughs> that's going to be in this year's rodeo? Well, you can taste essentially the vendors. It's, it's up for a prize. So we vote on, there are different prizes that they hand out, okay. right? But they also do like the best of show for wine. And I met so many great, uh, kind viewers. Texas going for the beads. <laughs> so many great viewers. Aww. And there you go. That's the Piper well, Helsick. They won best of show. I'm actually sitting on their trophy. Did they let they you won. take home that ginormous bottle of wine that you have? You know what? That ginormous bottle is probably going to make an appearance on Houston Life later this week. Oh. Because this is one of the wines that you can buy at HEB. And these guys, the, the winemakers actually had flown in from France. Okay. And they were like, holy cow, we didn't realize what a big deal Best Bites is. And there's the buckle that they want for Best of Show. That's so cool. Check that out. So next year, my advice, guys, buy your tickets early. I think this event always sells out. And one for of the sure. coolest parts, I have a wine glass for you. They upgraded. So this year, when you check in, they give you a plate and a Riedel glass, like a yes. crystal wine glass. A nice, fancy a one. A nice, big, fancy yeah. wine glass that you get to sip out of all night, and then you take it home at the end of the night. Can I comment one thing about that little plate? I went to this event before, and it's magnificent, but I didn't know that that little curve was for your wine glass. Oh, yeah, it's a plate with a cutout in right. it, so it holds your wine glass. Because I've never been that fancy before, and I was like, oh, what am I supposed to do with this? So I actually, I actually spilled my wine, trying to balance it all with my plate of food, mm -hmm. and then they came up to me and they were like, you could have just bought it right here yeah. in the little curve. And I had no idea that's yeah. what it was for. I remember the first time I saw one of those, and I thought, this is genius. It's yeah. a plate that holds your drink for you. Yep. Yeah, it was a good time. That. And I know you were invited last night and you and you were recovering. I so had to decline the invite. I, I came home and I slept. I just caught up on sleep because I, I warmed up as well. I know anybody out at Mardi Gras this weekend got a little uh, cold out there. We didn't realize it was going to be as windy and as chilly. Yeah. You guys might not have been able to see, especially from where you were. We were moving around via the floats, so we got to, like, get a little more warmth by moving, but you guys were just sitting there, and it was chilly when you were just sitting there, you know? Yeah, the, <sighs> one, the one time in Texas where I felt like uh, where I needed some thermal underwear. I actually was wearing long underwear under my you were? under my tux. <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> Sexy, that. Sexy, <laughs> right? <laughs> Is there so, do you ever wear long underwear? I can't say that I have. I mean, I have, I'll keep my leggings on underneath a pair of jeans. There's just nothing, nothing good about them. I mean, other than the, the fact that they keep you warm, but right. we were usually when we go skiing, but I thought, you know what? It's the parade coverage. I'm going to put it on tonight. And every time I put it on, I just feel like, Oh, man. <laughs> it's just they don't look good. They're not comfortable. They're itchy. And oh. probably most Houstonians, maybe you don't even know what I'm talking about. Long underwear is just is it like a underwear that's long. Is it like what we see from Uncle Eddie in Vegas Vacation, like the whole onesie type of? You could you could wear sleeves. a full onesie, but you got to have a flap in the back. OK, the trap, the trap door. And in the front. OK. <laughs> Be, I'm just saying, like, you're so, going to need. Of course. To use the restroom. You are going to need to use the restroom at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, um, I am so excited about rodeo <laughs> season, guys. And as always, we love your tips, too. One of the things that I loved about interacting with a lot of our Channel 2 viewers last night is so many people say that they watch Houston Life because they can learn about the city. Even yep. natives who have lived here their entire lives, they say, like, oh, my gosh, your, your show inspires us to get out and explore things that we either haven't done or we've taken for granted. May not know about. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you got to realize that a lot of our best ideas have come from our viewers and people who are either native Houstonians or who just moved here. Right. Uh, Cora, our makeup artist today, she just moved here, and so she's exploring the city through new eyes, and we always want to know what you think, where you hang out, where you go, so send us your ideas. Please, I love it. I'm experiencing new restaurants all the time because people are like, have you tried this place? It's brand new in the Heights. It's brand new in the Galleria. I love it. I love all the ideas. Well, and you have some great assignments on Houston Life. Oh, yeah. I must say.
I do. Sometimes I feel a little bit uh, jealous. I'll All invite right. you to the yacht next year, okay? Yeah, I didn't get an invite to that yacht. <laughs> Maybe they thought that the long underwear thing would have just come on Friday night, and that's a big no-no. Don't invite that loser with his long underwear. <laughs> Yeah, it, it also adds, like, extra bulk. Tillman, I want to be invited to the yacht, okay? Okay. Um, guys, let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Texy is loving these beats. <laughs> he keeps going for them. Tex! You can't... This message. Oh, little Tex man. Aww. How you doing? That's the spot. He is so good. I think Tex is feeling it. You know, this morning when the rain was coming down, oh. we had a lot of trouble getting out of bed this morning. It's yeah. so hard to do when the rain is like the sound, it's dark. I know. You just want to like stand or the something. covers or get on the couch and binge watch something. That's what oh, you yeah. ended up doing yesterday, right? Just All relaxing day. at home. All day. You know, we finished the show You on Netflix. On, oh, and everybody's talking about you. That's I the mean, second thing. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean. I haven't it's the one seen with the Pim show. Badgley. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a thriller. It's a kind thrill of suspenseful thriller. And kind of dark, right? Yeah, for sure. And okay. it's the second season. I also finished Cheer, which our entire office was nonstop talking about. So now I can make sure I know who all the characters are. And I also started the new season of Narcos, Mexico. Okay. We watched the first season and it was amazing. So I started the first and that's when I got really sleepy, and that's one that I have to pay super attention to. So I turned it off, and, and we just resorted to more episodes of that 70s show reruns. And that's just a simple watch. So if you put that on, we just binge that always, all day. And do you and Gabe watch the same shows together? Because a lot of couples are very serious about this, right? Like if you're watching a show together, and then one person watches like, an episode without right. you, they consider it cheating. I agree binge with that. Binge cheating. Yes. <laughs> We will normally watch them together unless he has time during the day to watch one. Our hours are kind of reversed, so I'll come home and I'll play catch up, but we don't share any secrets if I haven't or he hasn't caught up. Do you and Brandon do that? We do. We watch shows together. We don't do a lot, though, because lately, I don't even remember what it feels like to sit on my couch. The, just, honestly, I don't remember the last yeah. time we sat on the couch. And We've had the time going, to going. Just and right. had the time. If we have a night together where we can be at home on the couch, I feel like that is such a gift. And I think Morning Show is the last thing oh. that we watched. But we have this problem where we'll watch a few episodes mm -hmm. and then we'll leave a show for six months and then maybe come back to it. We're really not great about keeping up with it. Yeah, and I but, started Morning Show. Well, what'd you think? I love it so far. With Jennifer Aniston mm -hmm. and Steve Reese Witherspoon. Carell. Steve mm -hmm. Carell, it's, it's so, so great. But how many episodes do you have to watch before it's considered binge watching. I think this is how you judge. Because if you're watching on, let's say you're watching on Netflix, Netflix will pop up with the, hey, are you still watching? And then they'll stop until you hit yes or no. Yeah. And they're like, hey, wake back up, or hey, come check out your TV again. So that's, I feel like, a good binge sec like second to catch up if you're not really paying attention. Yeah. I think most people consider about three episodes to be Binge. when you're binging something. But what if you binge that and then you leave the show and you don't come back to it? Not because you don't like the show, just because you... You just forgot about it. Yeah. It's tricky also because some of them are like 26-minute episodes and then some of them are 45 and then some of them are just over an hour. So it's hard to kind of cut out five hours a day if you're trying to w binge watch yeah, a show I know. that's lengthy. An hour is definitely a commitment, and we have definitely started oh, yeah. either a movie or a TV show, and 15 or 20 minutes in, just we just we turn bailed. It, we, <laughs> I know, sometimes it, it seems we have to watch yeah. maybe three or four consecutive nights to get through one episode. <laughs> one episode? I know, I'm 38 it's going on 138. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> well, we're going to have some fun on today's show. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here, Lauren. Me too. I'm so glad to be here. And since it's raining, I know typically Lauren is running all over town, not just in Houston, but you really cover stories as far as our TV signal reaches. You cover a lot La of ground. Look, last week we were in the Woodlands. We were in Katy. We were up in Conroe. We've done Pearland. We're everywhere that all the Houstonians want to be. And when people ask you, you know, how big is Houston? You don't realize it until you start driving to Conroe, and it's, you're you're on the road for like 45 minutes, and you still have another 20 to go. Yeah. Still in Houston. Still in Houston. Mm -hmm. It is so big. This morning, because of, of the weather, we live right near downtown. Mm -hmm. Like, you can reach out and touch it. Yeah. And I took 
I think I drove 30 miles to work today out of the way. I went all the way down to the Beltway. Has this ever happened to you guys? You hit a construction point. Oh my goodness. And you maybe you miss an exit, which may or may not have been what happened to me this morning. But I went so, I mean the Beltway. That's really far. Like eight around the city. And I could see downtown way in the distance. So I drove all over the place to get to work it's this morning. It's easy to miss that exit, though, downtown, though, specifically with the one, the one ways. And then when they throw in construction, it's even worse. Yeah. But it was a nice detour of the city. And I thought, you know what? I'm late to work now. But this is kind of a cool... It's kind of a cool chance to see the city because I feel like you can spend a lifetime living in a city this big and still just barely scratch the surface. You are correct. That's exactly right. Yeah, right, especially well, when you get lost. It's like, now I'm 30 minutes out of the way. I kind of like getting lost. I think it's fun. All right, well, let's chat about today's show. Whether you're taking time off to go to the beach or to visit another city, Randy Mancarius, executive director of Crime Stoppers of Houston, has important tips to help keep our families safe during spring break. And this really is important stuff. And people post things mindlessly right. on social media all the time to let burglars know that your house they're not is, gone they're yeah, gone they're gone that's exactly right and memorial herman texas medical center recently opened up the brand new susan and Fias seraphine pavilion critical care tower which includes a new emergency and trauma center and is also the new home for memorial herman life flight i'll give you guys a tour of the beautiful new building coming up after the break state of the art look at that oh, amazing Houston is home to some of the best, if not the best, medical facility and care in the world. And right in our backyard is the Memorial Herman Health System, and they've got a brand new building we are showing off today. It's the new Susan and Fayez Seraphim Pavilion, and I am here with Greg Harrelson. He's the CEO of Memorial Herman Texas Medical Center. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. It's a beautiful new building. We've seen a little bit about it. And we're just stepping in the lobby, and I want to point out before we start this beautiful dedication of memorabilia just as you walk in the Life Flight Lobby. Yeah, it really speaks to the legacy of this team and how far they've come and the, the journey that they've been on to get continuously better in all that they do and how we take care of the trauma patients in that golden hour um, from when they first are injured to when we finally get their, their treatment, shorting, shortening that as much as possible. And this team has been dedicated to that effort for over uh, 45 years. So and that really impressive. speaks volumes about what Memorial Herman does for the Houston yes. community, right? Yes, sure. And with this new building, there's a lot that comes with that. Absolutely. So with that comes a wonderful new pavilion here with the Susan and Faya Seraphim Pavilion. We're so grateful for their generous support of making this happen. And, at the, and, and within this building is a brand new emergency room, which will be over six, 76,000 square feet, 63 treatment rooms. Uh, we go on uh, above that and we begin to grow our OR footprint. Um, we can, we're adding 186 new beds in this tower and we have significant room to grow into the future. Let's talk a little bit about the actual building with the brand new helipad. It's yes, huge in it's size. Huge. <laughs> yes, it is. Not to mention the areas surrounding that, our new area for dispatch and this, the, the surrounding uh, support space for education. We do a tremendous amount of community education and outreach here, and this allows us to really expand and grow that. Now, Greg, what else sets this building apart from other Memorial Herman buildings? Well, the size of it, for one, it's, <laughs> it's over 1.3 million square feet, which is unlike any uh, construction project or uh, hospital project that I've been a part of in my 20 years in healthcare. So for that alone, it's very special. The other thing that's very unique about this is that it's all built for in, in, intensive care, so all critical care. Um, designed rooms so that over the over the course of time as we believe healthcare will evolve into the future and hospitals uh, become more about the intense care that can be provided and some of the lower acuity cares provided outside of hospitals and maybe in the outpatient side this building is built for the future for all needs uh, whether it be in the, the operating room having right sized operating rooms or perfectly sized ICU rooms for the future built for new equipment built state of the art for the for the community and there's a lot of great things in this new establishment. Part of the new Susan and Faya Seraphim Pavilion is the Red Duke Trauma Institute. I am here with Dr. Michelle McNutt. She is Chief of Trauma, Red Duke Trauma Institute at Memorial Herman Texas Medical Center and UT Health. What a title. <laughs> that is wonderful to have you here. We're Thank so you. glad you're here in our backyard. Let's talk a little bit about this institute. The Red Duke Trauma Institute is one of the busiest, by far, level one trauma centers in the nation and one of only two adult 
adult level one trauma centers in Houston. Tell us all about the new things that can be seen here. Yeah, absolutely. We're really excited to be up and running in the new tower now. Um, you know, trauma is actually the leading cause of preventable death in the United States. And bleeding and brain injury are the most common causes of death from trauma. We know that the sooner we can stop the bleeding and the sooner we can diagnose a brain injury, the better the patient does. And with all this new access, easy access, mm -hmm. it allows you to get to patients quicker. Well, absolutely, and it also combines a combination of advanced uh, imaging technology with our surgical procedures. So um, most trauma operating rooms don't have the ability to do a CAT scan of the head. And so when you have to operate on somebody emergently, then that delays diagnosing their brain injury and it delays treatment. So this will be the first time that we can actually combine all surgical procedures and all pertinent images into one location. Now let's talk about the new Herman Life Flight program. It's got a brand new helipad that is 10,000 square feet and it's larger than the other one. It can accommodate the weight of a Black Hawk helicopter. That's right. How much more beneficial is that gonna be? Oh, this is huge. We really view Life Flight as an extension of all of the services we provide within the hospital. And we actually have uh, something called a scene to OR pathway, which allows the Memorial Herman Trauma Network and Life Flight to actually pick up injured patients that are injured far away from the medical center and take them directly from the scene into our operating room. So you're essentially getting treated in this air flight process mm -hmm. halfway to your hospital. You bet. And then with this new pathway, we skip the emergency room and that shaves off valuable time when time matters most. So the patient lands on the helipad, will be transported via a special elevator that stops literally 10 feet outside of our hybrid operating room suite. And then is taken directly to surgery where we can operate on any part of the body to stop the bleeding and also do CAT scan images to diagnose other injuries. Now, Memorial Herman is also committed to meeting the needs of the Houston community. They've got state-of-the-art care and trauma, as you mentioned. Emergency medicine, can they also be treated for that in the air as well? Absolutely, yeah, we do blood transfusion in the air, um, interventions, we do ultrasounds so that we can diagnose where the patient is bleeding. It's also really important to note that uh, while Memorial Hermann Hospital is one of only two adult level one hospitals in Houston, we're the only level one trauma center that treats both adults and children. So if your entire family is in a car accident, you can all be taken to the same facility and your injuries be treated in the same hospital. And saving that time is just gonna be saving more lives. Absolutely. Just a wonderful addition. We're really excited for it. It's the new Susan and Faya Seraphim Pavilion here at Memorial Hermann's Health System. For more information, just log on to Memorial Hermann org. In addition to all the high-tech advances at Memorial Hermann, the Susan and Faya Seraphine Pavilion also has a brand new 900 space parking garage and the emergency center has its own dedicated parking valet service. Parking is super helpful. Plus yeah. on top of that, the cafeteria has a new item list including vegan and ve uh, vegetarian options. That is fantastic. Yeah. And the facility too looks absolutely beautiful. It's magnificent. It's beautiful. Peace of mind knowing you're in good hands. Absolutely. All right, shifting gears now. It was a rainy start to our morning today. So what's ahead for the rest of the week? We'll get a check of the forecast coming up next. It was so cozy this morning under the blankets, listening to the rain coming down. I Didn't want to get out of bed. I agree so much with that. And it's a Monday. Meteorologist Britta Werman is standing by with a check of the forecast. Good afternoon. I hope you're having a great Monday. Uh, definitely a soggy start, but we have dried out. The rain is pushing out and temperatures will be in the 70s today. Believe it or not, it was a cold front that rolled through this morning, but there's been no cool down. That is still in the forecast, but we have to wait for it. We have a second cold front on the way and that's going to be moving through Tuesday. So for this afternoon, if you're picking up little ones after school, it's going to be dry. Temperatures will be in the 70s. And then as we go into tomorrow, we're still on the mild side, but a cold 
cold fronts on the way. I want to pause the clock at 7 a.m. Temperatures in the 50s, but slowly and surely as we head into the afternoon, we'll have some cooler conditions off to the northwest, but we're still ahead of the front here in Harris County. So tomorrow, we're still going to be in the 70s. The cold air does not push in until tomorrow night. By Wednesday morning, we're waking up in the 40s, and Wednesday afternoon, we're struggling to get into the low 50s. It is going to be a brisk and cold Wednesday. The good news is we have sunshine in the forecast, but those winter temperatures, they are no joke. If you did some early planting, pay attention this 10 day very closely. Wednesday night and Thursday night. Those are the coldest out of the bunch. 74 degrees for today. Again, the rain, it's moved out of here. We'll be dry tomorrow with temperatures in the 70s. We might have to increase those afternoon highs. It kind of depends on if you live farther north or down to the south. If you're in our coastal counties, we're going to stay warm tomorrow. That cold air arriving as we move into Wednesday with a high of 54 degrees. And then we're waking up to freezing temperatures Thursday morning. Thank you, Britta. And coming up next, what you need to know before heading out for spring break with your family. Tips, uh, tips to keep everyone safe are coming up next. Spring break is a popular time to travel, and if you're planning to go out of town with your family, you'll want to listen up to this. Some very important and easy things we can all do. Rania Mancarius, Executive Director with Crime Stoppers of Houston, is here with some tips to keep everyone safe. Welcome back to the show. It's been a minute since we've seen I know. you. Happy 2020. Oh, Happy, Happy New 2020. Year. Yes. Can you believe? And you always, Rania, you have such great advice for us. This is not to scare people, no. but it's just to remind people that simple things like, hey, going out on vacation, posting on Facebook, your house is empty. I mean, this is basic stuff that many of us do that could be putting us in danger. Hey, there's so many things. And look, we want you to travel. We want everybody to go out and enjoy spring break. It's This is the time. But just think about your safety when you're doing it. So there's so many things we look at. One, do you even know the city, the country you're going to? Are there any travel bans, any travel warnings? Right now we're talking about the coronavirus. There are other things that we need to be thinking about. The State Department has such an easy to navigate website. There's a program you can sign up for. It's free. It's called STEP. It's Smart Travelers Enrollment Program. They're going to they're going to stay in touch with you while you're away. They're going to make it easy for you to get alerts if there's something going on in the city you're going to. They're going to notify your family. There's so many things you can do to keep yourself safe proactively. And some of it's in your hands and some of it's not, but you started Derek with with social media. What are we posting and why and when yeah. and how? Why are servers, networks, are they secure or not? There's just so many things to think about. With that being said specifically, you're literally telling people that your house is going to be empty. Yeah, you know, and again, it's not the thought that everybody's out to get you. But we do have to keep in mind that there are thieves who troll social media looking for homes that are vacant. So think about when you're posting. You, If you want to post during your travel, of course you can. But it might be better to post after. Think about something else. Do your friends want to be tagged in the in the posts? Maybe they don't want other people to know they're traveling. So as a group, as a, as a group of friends, talk about it beforehand. You know, something that's silly, a lot of us take rideshare Uber to the airport. It's so much easier. But do you want to tell your Uber driver that you're going to be gone for the next two weeks? Yeah. We were just talking about yeah. this the other day. And again, it's not to assume that everybody's out to hurt you or get you, but it's just something to think about. You know. You can call your neighborhood police department. They'll do drive-bys, make sure your home is okay. Even tell you, you know, there's a package outside your door. Do you want us to collect it if you're going to be gone for some time? You can call, provide these services. Make sure your home is locked. You know, the lights can come on automatically from time to time. A lot of us have those smart home features now. Just small, simple things you can do to protect yourself. And maybe not take a phone call and tell people where you're going in the Uber. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, look, we because we don't want people to be paranoid, but we're not thinking about our safety proactively. So we're encouraging people to do that. Thinking of uh, phone calls, when you're home, when you're gone and you have your home alarm on, if your alarm goes off, where does the alarm company, who do they call? Some people say, well, I have them call my office. Great, you're not at your office. Okay, well, they call the home. You're not home. They call my cell. Well, does your cell work overseas? So think about how your alarm system is set up, how that's working while you're gone. Make sure they are notified that you're going to be out of the country um, in case there's some issues getting in touch with you. So first step here, make sure your destination is safe. You, you mentioned the State Department's website. We can look it up and sign up for the STEP program. Yes. And then regardless of where our destination is, a theme park, a water park, international, domestic, you say just be aware. 
be aware. I mean, yes, you're on vacation. Yes, have fun, of course. But it doesn't mean that your safety is no longer a priority or everybody around you is on vacation having fun too. No, wherever you go, there are thieves, there are people that are looking to harm you and you have to be careful of it. There are some cities in, in the world that are known for pickpockets. Oh yeah. Um, there are cafes where it is known that there it's an unsecured network. If you're gonna go on there and log on, somebody else is probably gonna get your information. So just think about it, know about it. Is a city that you're going to, have they had riots recently? Are there problems with ride sharings there? Is there a problem with alcohol? We've saw some cities, you know, where there were problems with alcohol in the city. So just have an idea of what you're walking into and go and explore and have the best time while you're safe. Always lock up your valuables. Uh, it's very important. And you know, there's a strategy to this. So you have your passport, put your original in the hotel safe, have a copy on you, and then have a copy back home for friends and family or somebody you can contact. And again, while you're out and about, have an extra credit card and extra cash in the hotel safe as well. Don't carry, like if you're like me, I literally have every pocket stuffed with something. Right. You don't have to have everything on you at all times. Leave it back in the hotel. So if something were to happen, you have some place to go and get your belongings. I was pickpocketed once in Madrid on the first day of vacation oh, no. and everything was gone. And everything luckily I, gone. I borrowed from friends. Water <laughs> safety, this is a big one, Rania. Something that a lot of people don't think about, but there are a lot of deaths and near drownings oh, when families yes. go on vacation. Well, watch your kids and then again, not not everything operates the way we do here. So we were just traveling this summer. The hotel had no lifeguards on duty. They didn't even have safety devices nearby. So if something happened, you're sort of on your own. So you have to watch your kids. But think about alcohol in the heat, alcohol when you're in the water. If you want to take out a boat, great. But make sure you know how to use the boat. Make sure you know where to go. If there are spots you shouldn't be in in the water, just things to think about. But to still enjoy the water as you travel. If you have young kids, it's very important that when you're traveling, they know where you're staying, correct? Because yes. in the event there is some sort of family separation right. when you're on an outing, they need to be able to tell a helpful person Who how to get aware. back to and, their hotel. And this is, of course, age appropriate. So we were just at Universal Studios and I saw a little girl, maybe three years old, hysterically crying for oh, her no. mom. I was gonna just start crying with her. Of course, mm -hmm. her mom's looking forward to, but you know, when something like that happens, it's about luck. You just ha hope you're lucky enough to find each other or this little three-year-old knows to go to a police officer. But when you're out and about, you have kids, tweens and older, Stop and say, hey, look, we're going to be staying at the Marriott. Our room is 404. If we get lost, this is exactly what you need to do. Give them information. A lot of times we just lug our kids with us and really don't hope. They, we're just hoping they're following our footsteps and walking along with us, which, of course, they are. But there's no reason to keep that information fr from them. Let them know where you're staying. And even what your plans are for the day. That's not always good because they're going to complain. But it's okay. You right. know, share what you're doing and have safety ch checks and points along the way. With the tweens, I would share the social media oh, dangers with absolutely. them as well because they just post and post and post. You know, we see stories all the time of kids posting they were in France or wherever and somebody will reach out to them later and say, oh, I was just there. What did you find interesting? And they use that as a way to start a correspondence or a friendship with those kids. Wow. Let kids know that those things happen. Okay, Rania Mancarius, thank you so much for thank stopping you. by. Some great tips to keep us safe on spring break. And in the meantime, if you would like to connect with Rania, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, and look for the scene on Houston Life section. And y'all do us a favor, pop on over to our Instagram page and click on that follow button. Every day we post behind the scenes pictures, videos, and so much more. Just search Houston Life TV and uh, let the fun begin. <laughs> we'll be right back this message. Are you struggling to lose the extra pounds? If so, you are not alone. A local company promises to help you in your weight loss journey. Here with all the details is CEO of Innovative Lasers of Houston, Laura Alexis, along with Esteban Garza, who has lost over 12 pounds of body fat in six sessions. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you very much. That is wonderful. How do you feel, Esteban? feel great. And then just six sessions is all it took. Unbelievable, but it really works. I mean, it, uh, and it's, you don't feel nothing. I mean, just sit in there, enjoy yourself. Uh, it's uh, 40 minutes go by. And the easiest thing you ever did, right? The easiest thing you ever did. Well, Laura, let's tell a little bit about Esteban's journey. We're gonna look at some of his before and after pictures. Wow, look at that, that's amazing. On the left was how long ago? It's been at least uh, four months ago. 
So. Four months, eight inches over 12 pounds of body fat in six sessions. You came in with concerns about your chest and waist. And Laura, what was your suggestion? Well, um, we everybody's different. So based on his goals and target areas, uh, there are certain seg a certain um, sessions that we prescribe for the patient, and the results were immediate. I mean, his results were right away, uh, just like we promise everybody else's results. Absolutely, and this is with the Zerona laser. Let's tell everybody how it works. Well, what makes us different is that the use of the Zerona laser is a key ingredient, and it offers no downtime, no swelling, no bruising, no pain, no heat, no cold. So patients virtually feel nothing at all undergoing treatment. Now the science behind it is that it creates tiny microscopic tears into the fat cells. The contents of the fat cell naturally seep out through bodily fluids such as urine and sweat, resulting in instant inch loss. And you're just going in, relaxing for each session, and then you come back in, and it's almost like you're just relaxing and doing nothing, and you're losing all of this weight. That's right, it's like a spa experience. Oh, that's amazing. Let's tell us about what you do and how you're different than other weight loss clinics. Uh, the results are immediate, and that would, that's one thing that sets it apart from everybody else. You don't have to wait weeks at a time to see your results. We live in an era now that we want results now, today, and that's what we offer. This now, is really cool to watch if you want to see kind of how it works, a little time-lapse video. Right. This is the guaranteed results you were talking about, and, and you mentioned it's, I want to post a picture now. I want to fit into this dress now. That's right, and that's what we promise. The results are immediate. So a patient can come in on a Monday, for example. Um, the, the scales that we use are very analytical. They're not regular scales. They not only tell us the patient's weight, but they tell us how and where the weight is being distributed which is very motivating to the patient when they come in for their next session because they see the fat levels just zoom down. And that makes it fun. It is a fun experience and it's immediate and you're gonna see those results. And I know we've got a very special Houston Life special offer. Right. Tell us a little bit about it. Typically our transformation package is $2,400. However, for viewers now, it's half off. And if you're one of the first 100 callers, we're even going to throw in an additional three sessions for free. And that magic number to call is 281 888-3094. Now it's only for the first 100 callers. So, so you have to be quick on the phones. Let's tell everybody a little bit about how long each session will last. If, if they were coming in for the first time, what should they expect for their duration of the, se of the session? The session itself is two 20 minute treatments. So patients can expect to be in the office for about an hour. And do they need to come prepared in a specific amount of clothing? No, no, we, uh, our, our rooms are very private so they can come and dress as they are. Um, depending on the patient's uh, target areas, we'll just, you know, pull the, the, the uh, clothes up or depending, it just depends. And you're going to give them a customized weight loss program for each patient that comes in. Right. What works for you is not going to work for your friend, for example. Everybody has different goals and different target areas. And look at these before and after pictures. It's just amazing because I struggle with a couple of extra last pounds and there's just, I feel no other way to get rid of it. And when you've just felt that way for so long, this is going to be your answer. Right, right. Um, because, the re because the results are immediate, that's what makes us so popular. I mean, patients can come in and get their weight under control, and it just is testimonial after <coughs> testimonials. The results are compelling. Absolutely. Well, I know there's a lot of different areas that Houston viewers would like to know where you're located. Tell us about the locations. We have five locations. We have one in the Galleria, Spring, Clear Lake, um, Sugarland and in Katy. And it's amazing. Looks like you've expanded to Dallas as well. Yes, we have a Dallas location as well. If they're willing to drive, they can go to <laughs> Dallas for that. So once again, the first 100 callers are going to get six sessions for $1,200. That's 50% off of what's normally $2,400 plus three sessions for free if you mention Houston Life. And that magic phone number if you'd like to call is 281-888. 3094 to get in on this special offer. You can also go online to schedule a free consultation, and that's going to be at innovativelasersofhouston.com. Laura and Esteban, thank you so much. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Thank you. Beware. Classic. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, Fat Tuesday, and Lauren, you paid a visit to Three Brothers Bakery. This is one of my all-time favorite growing up in Houston bakeries. It's in Meyerland on South Brazewood. The epic king cake for Mardi Gras Fat Tuesday celebrations will be at Three Brothers Bakery. I'm going to show you how to make them. They have this massive vat of icing that they let me stick my hands in, my clean hands. Uh and ice these king cakes and sprinkle them. It was amazing. I cannot wait for you guys 
to see this. I'd like to go swimming in that vat. <laughs> so you got to see from start to finish how they make the cakes? From start to finish, how and where they stick the little baby that goes in for good luck, I will tell you all about it. Very nice. Also, five spots to visit in Fort Bend County. What to do and see with your family from museums to parks and places you might have missed. Get out and explore your neighborhood, folks. And by the way, look at these photos on your screen. It's beautiful. Just a short drive down the road. And in the meantime, thank you again for joining us today on Houston Life. Little Tex Man. It's funny, a lot of our viewers think that Tex uh, is just tired all the time. Right. Which is not the case. No. Uh, we have video proof <laughs> from our commercial breaks when he was running around. So I'll post that I've never later. seen him so active at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, he was running got around the place. Got a of energy. I think the beads got him excited. I think it was the beads. I think it was the talk about Tillman Fertitta's champagne pre-party on his yacht. The San Luis salute. He's just very festive. He's very Mark Rock festive these days. And because of popular demand, our viewers, <laughs> Lauren, really loved your Lil John impressions. <laughs> <laughs> so can you just... <laughs> Dare you to go in the lobby of Channel Two and just yell that really loudly? I, I would like people to will come running. Back. Lil John is here. I would like to get invited back. Okay, Derek. You will. Lil John is Sabotage. in the house. <laughs> Thank you guys. We'll, we'll see, see you back guys tomorrow. tomorrow.